thermal images with you guys quickly because every single Sparky has to know how to use a thermal imager because you cannot see the temperatures of the internal components like I showed change of a switch burning out regardless of quality you can't see the inside components people drill above your components they blow their drills dust off and all of it goes and lays inside the components and they heat up so the only way to see this is with a thermal imager so you can go get yourself uh, one that's on a cat phone you can go get yourself a really expensive um, one from Fluke, you can go get yourself a Fluro one that's really expensive, you get the ones that plug into your phones type C. Either way, they'll all be doing the same thing now. So when you look at, uh, if you look at like a thermal imager, the basis of thermal imaging comes from the fact that anything above zero Kelvin will emit IR, which is infrared radiation, all right? So anything above IR will emit this infrared radiation, and then obviously you'll use a sensor to detect this, and it gives you this broad spectrum color-coded, uh, when you display it on an image, look. So you'll just obviously see the redder, depending on what thermal imager you have, is hotter, right? So you just obviously take the temperature that it is and then check if your circuit breaker can even operate at that temperature. Otherwise, you, you, you basically will be raising alarms, right? Uh, so you, you, you test your circuit breakers and stuff, or you test the switch gear, you, you, you thermal image it while it is running at full load, to check if everything is running normally, is anything getting hot in the system. You can even check your components within your inverters installation on your batteries. Regardless, it'll tell you the, it'll tell you exactly where the hotspots are. You could use it for uh, you could use it for solar panel hotspots as well. It'll show you where the solar panel hotspots are as well, etc. Um, etc. Et you know, maybe you got a bad panel. Yeah. So infra infrared uh, detecting thermal images are absolutely necessary for every single Sparky to use. You don't have to go and buy the most expensive one, you can just use one that is relatively reliable, correct? So like I said, I've been using the ones on the phones, uh, then the other guys bring out their 80,000 Rand one and it does the exact same thing. I'm like, look, there's a hotspot, that thing's too hot. Uh, so regardless, they're super useful. Alright, so the way you use a thermal imager is, as we've previously discussed now, uh, you'll look at where the heat spots are and if you've got a three phase line and one of them is running hotter, you'll have an imbalance, correct? You'll obviously have then an imbalance on that line and you'll have to distribute loads uh, downward uh, onto one of the other lines that are least hot. Uh, but I mean, you can check this with a three phase clamp or you can clamp each one of the phases. Uh, or, or the thermal imager will immediately show you, you know, it's one of those things. It's super useful. It's literally like being uh, Superman or something, being able to see into things. I guess it's just a super cool uh, tester. It's one of the first ones I ended up getting directly on the apprenticeship and I've been I've basically had these cat phones with these thermal images in them since day one. I've also had more expensive ones, but like I've said, I've never really been too impressed with them. Uh, 